Nico Nico Nine. Yeah. Uh. Five Nine J. Uh, uh. Let me speak my mind up. Uh, uh. This is me keeping it real. Uh huh. Keeping it one hundred. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. With that being said, man, um, uh, shout out to all the subscribers that kept me informed of what was published. I read about it in a couple of, you know, news blogs. But basically, it takes place in L.A. County Jail. Now, you guys are very familiar that I don't know nothing about L.A. County Jail. Like, i never been there know would I ever go there and I just do do want to say after hearing all those stories that I've ever heard about LA County Jail shout out to the people that actually went to LA County Jail and survived it much respects man because as it is a dangerous environment especially the way it's controlled the way it's ran and the way things have been looking as of the last past 10 years with politics they make it hard for anybody just to go do their time peacefully and conveniently without being interfered or being threatened or being extorted by other members that hey, that just threw their lives away, that flushing their lives down the toilet. So let's get into this video. In the article that I read, as you can see across the screen, you know, one was found dead, six were hospitalized, and a controlled substance that was found, a white substance that they believe was fentanyl. And one person lost his life indulging in that type of recreational drug. And we all know how LA County Jail works. It's real simple. A lot of people get busted and I mean, I've heard small stories where people, you know, get pulled over or people are on the run and they they just hoop a couple with a couple of sacks, whatever they had in their pocket, bring it in, sell it, make some feria, do their time and bounce out. But when it comes to L.A. County Jail, you know, that's that, that L.A. County Jail is being divided by three members of the state commission of the Mexican Mafia. I'm not saying in this particular case any three, because I haven't got no information on it, any three of them had anything to do with it. But I have heard a lot of times recently how it's being controlled and in the past how most got controlled it and other members controlled it. That, that, that LA County Jail is one big racket on how to make profit. Now this substance could have came from the blacks, could have came from the whites, you know, could have came from anybody. It didn't identify specifically that it was Mexicanos that were overdosing. But I can tell you right now, blacks ain't gonna be doing no fentanyl, anything with fentanyl for that matter. So it's mostly whites and Mexicans that will indulge in recreational substances that are actually cut with fentanyl. But we're gonna talk about the aspect of the Mexicanos because I wanna say 85% might, it's an 85% chance that it might be Mexicanos that we're indulging. Whether they're affiliates, non-residents, doesn't matter. It's, it's just known in our heritage and our culture and everything about our background has been publicized all over social media that, you know, as people that are in county jail, penal system, we're drug users. I'm not saying everybody that's Mexicano or Chicano that's ever been to the penal system indulged in drugs. I'm just saying that's what we're known for. And that is a big reputation that we got to try to overcome, that we got to try to beat. We're drug users. Think about it for a little bit. A lot of people are fans of American Me. That was one of the first published, besides Colors, published movies that, you know, talked about our culture, our upbringing, how gangs came about in Southern California and then gravitated towards Northern California. That movie alone set the tone, sent the message, and displayed who we really are. Mexicanos that overcame, you know, the, the Zutsu era, created gang neighborhoods, in those gang neighborhoods, what did you see all over American Me? Everybody strung out on dope. Everybody strung out on heroin, whether it was the Italian mafia controlling the drug trade and, and was just feeding it to our people. You see it in that, you see it in American Me a lot. The scene where he was like, man, no Italians, man, do no heroin. No, 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 you don't see no Italians all strung out, no junkies. It was all Mexicanos. And that's when you see the head of the Mexican mafia talk about, you know, gaining control over the drug trade. So what they were doing is they were establishing a power in Southern California because they knew drugs was an epidemic. They wanted to control it, gain the money, gain the power, but most importantly, they fed it to our people. It was clearly displayed all over American me. That set the tone. And then as you go in and blood in and blood out, you see the same thing. Crucito shooting up heroin. Our people in the streets living in poverty, using drugs, shooting up heroin, smoking dope, smoking PCP, 
KJ. That's all I've ever known growing up. You know, that's whatever's taught to me. Even though it's Hollywood media, I mean, they got a general understanding of what our people indulge in in our lifestyle. Plain and simple. You can't deny it, it's what we know. I've been in the penal system for 15 years. All I ever seen was the majority of people that I ever sold dope to or bought dough from was another Mexican. So that's why I'm just gonna be on an assumption here. I'm, I'm, I'm admitting this on camera, an assumption that some of these victims were Mexicans. I don't know about the person that passed away. May he rest in peace. It's, it's very unfortunate that, you know, he indulged in getting high, just wanted to get high, and he ain't coming back from that because of the potency and what's and what these substances are being cut with. But here's another aspect I want to elaborate about. You know, there was a story. You know, we got Snuffy right here. We got Dopey. They were actually in L.A. County Jail at the time, a long time ago when Moscow was still alive, when Moscow had L.A. County Jail and he gave a quarter of the county jail to Snuffy because Snuffy was making profit and he was about his money. So we all know about that evolving door when it comes to the L.A. County Jail. Basically, anybody that's about to get released, the big homies right there like, hey, for you going home? Okay, matter of fact, I need you to go out there, catch a violation, make it back. You got about a week. Go to this address, pick up all this dope, put it up your your cornholio, you know, your TP for your butthole, you know, Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, 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 you're too young for that. I'm sorry, you guys. I know, young audience. So you're going to put, put all that in your butt and you're going to bring it back. Catch a quick little violation, drop it off to us, man. Gracias. A lot of people were doing that. That's how that racket became so big in LA County Jail where dudes were going to the streets, picking up what they needed to pick up, going back in the county, dropping off something that quadruples in price and these Mexican mafia homies and their foot soldiers are slanging it to their own people. That's all it really was. Southerners selling dope to Southerners in LA County Jail. And what, what, what would cost 20 bucks on the streets was $100 in the penal system, just extortion, you know, internal extortion. Taking all that money, sending it to all the big homies. You think they stop for one second and think, man, where are we getting this dope from? Is this dope even good? These big homies ain't even touching the dope. Dopey was doing the same thing before Snuffy took it over. They weren't even touching the dope. They were just grabbing a dope, having somebody sell it for them so their hands didn't get dirty. Hey, you OD, you OD, that's your fault. But you're gonna pay me my money one way or another. And if you do survive it, you're gonna pay me double the money one way or another. That's how the L.A. rackets really worked. Fox did it. Anybody that gains control over L.A. County Jail, the best way to make hundreds and thousands of dollars off one of the biggest jails in Southern California, in California, period, is the drug trade. They're going to take control over that drug trade and they're going to profit off your misery, your discomfort for being locked up and being away from your family, or they're going to make a profit off your abuse, your addiction, whether you're a Southerner or whether you're not a Southerner, they don't care what you're in there for. They don't care what you're going through. They don't care how miserable your life has been. And most importantly, they don't care that you're an addict. I think they're more concerned that you are an addict and they can feed that habit. They can supply that habit. And you're willing to do anything for that habit. And a majority of people that are incarcerated, just remember, we do drugs. I was doing drugs in there because I had nothing to do. And then when I got strung out, then I needed it. I became depending on it. You know, then it messed with my mind. It caused me to be a dirtbag, a skeezer, where I was just robbing people, stealing from people, beating up people, bullying people, extorting people. You're gonna develop those characteristics when you decide to feed that vein, chase that dragon. Six people are hospitalized, might bounce back. One person is not gonna come back. Why? Because while everybody's so busy trying to make a profit off crumbs, in a LA County jail, you gotta remember everything nowadays, which was has been a big epidemic all through social media. I think that's why law enforcement, all these letter boys are cracking down on all these drug cartels and making these major buses because they realize the severity of what's crossing that border. Them cartels that are supplying this drug, those Chapitos, the Felixes, La Lina, anybody that has any connection, any ties to, you know, chemists and that are constructing this chemical this fentanyl chemical that makes every drug that they sell 10 times more potent, but 10 times more liable for you to overdose and lose your life because of the potency, it's coming across that border. Everything that we see today in today's drugs, 
You don't even know. A Percocet could be cut with it just to enhance people's high. People are trying to make that much of a profit, not worrying about if somebody can die from it. So you got people across the border, you know, these, these cartels, they're sending it over, knowing damn well what that drug is capable of doing. Knowing damn well they're responsible for hundreds of thousands of overdoses throughout the United States. And somehow, some way, when it crosses that border, somebody's gonna get a hold of that potency, that drug, and it's gonna end up in LA County Jail. Do you think that your big homies thought for one minute, like, man, I wonder if these fools cut it or not? No, they just worried about it. They got a, they got a substantial amount of drugs at a cheap price, and they can flip it and profit. They don't care about who dies. The person that's selling you that sack doesn't care whether or not you live or die. Sometimes, you know, they do drug sales where, hey, bro, you want this? Hand over fist. You give me the dots, you transfer the money, I'll hand it to you right then and there. That way, if anything happens and you lose your life and you don't make it back, they still got paid. It might get traced back to them later, but they still got paid. It's getting that serious. And don't think for one minute that them boys across that border are sitting there thinking like, damn. I wonder if they're gonna know we cut it with fentanyl. They're thinking like, damn, these pendejos right here just bought it, they don't even care, they don't even know what is in it. They don't even know what kind of damage they're gonna do. Hey, but we made a profit though. That's all we did, we made our quota. You know, it's gonna be a chain reaction. These guys are gonna make money, not giving a damn who does the drug. Not giving a damn that most of the time they're selling their product on that side of the border, on this side of the border to their own people, because they don't even look at it like, hey, we're all the same people. They don't see nothing but profit and power over there. And then our people are gonna buy it. The first persons we're gonna turn to is our neighborhoods, our homies, people that we're close with, our neighbors. Most of the time, majority of the time, it's gonna be your brown people, it's gonna be your own people. And then some of those people are gonna get greedy and sell to whites, sell to blacks, sell to Asians, sell to anybody that's willing to use drugs and willing to smoke drugs and willing to shoot up drugs and like I said, a chain reaction. It just get the problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger. What's this bought and put in somebody's hands and once somebody decides to sell it. These seven people didn't know what they were getting themselves into other than they know drugs came into the facility. They wanted to indulge. They wanted to get high. Six of them got hospitalized and hopefully that's a wake up call to these drug addicts, to these people with addiction. That bro, whatever you guys are coming across, today's generation, you don't even know what you're putting in your arms, what you're slamming in your veins. It is a dangerous combination of what they're concocting, of what they're putting together. And dude, you could lose your life, man, because one person lost his life over a white substance that they didn't even know what it was cut with. That's how dangerous it is. And the message that I wanna do in this video is, man, I know a lot of kids out there are living a the life that I lived when I was 13, 14. Smoking dope, popping perks, popping pills, popping beans, anything that's very popular. Whatever rap has popularized, whatever the social media has popularized, whatever these TV shows have popularized as the next best drug, some of these kids just want to have that curiosity, want to have that fun, just want to have recreational times and memories to build. Just remember, back then, drugs was dangerous. Even now, they're 10 times more dangerous. You're just going to see a lot of overdoses and a lot of lives lost by young kids. I just don't want some of you kids that are in this lifestyle, chasing this lifestyle, part of this lifestyle, or hang around this lifestyle where drugs is a big thing. Drugs control the most of this lifestyle. I hate to say it, but I'm going to admit it, and I know people are, might not like that I can admit that. Drugs and gangs go together, plain and simple. Don't lose your life and take that risk of almost losing your life trying to have fun. There's a lot more ways to have fun. It's so easy to say no. It's so easy not to fall for peer pressure. You just gotta have the willingness to know that your life is more important to you than creating a memory, than impressing your peers, but most importantly, your curiosity. Because my curiosity led to me becoming a drug addict all throughout the penal system. And it's affected me long-term. I, I may have been sober for the last past few years, but don't think that my addiction, I've ever recovered from it. Don't think that my addiction doesn't overpower me every other day and overpower my thoughts and take control of my PTSD where sometimes I just, I fiend for it. Trust me, an addiction, my addiction is gonna be very long-term. You don't wanna become that. So I hope you really do grasp the message in my video, man. Just say no to drugs. Today's drugs are very dangerous. So with that being said, like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.